Chrome Developer Tools. So this is a quick overview of Chrome Developer Tools. You use Google Chrome and uh, you right click anywhere and you go to inspect and then Chrome Developer Tools pops up right there. You can move it to the bottom if you like or put it in its own window uh, if you like using this, this little menu in here. Um, and uh, so that's it. Uh, it shows you, as you can see, uh, this is the HTML that makes up the page that you're looking at at that time, right? And uh, as I move my mouse, it tries to highlight the thing that I'm looking that is being highlighted in the HTML in the actual page. Let me move this to the right so it can be maybe a bit easier. I'm going to look for the actual questions that we see here. And so you see, I highlight everything. So that means that it's got children. Uh, boom, this one must have children, children. Okay, so here are the questions, boom. As you see, I can move through each question. Each one gets highlighted. If I want to go the other way around, if I want to find out, say, what's the HTML associated with this text here, I click here first. And then as I move here, then it does the other way around. It highlights the HTML. So uh, I click there. Once I click, it selects the question, and now I see it here. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Uh, you can change this, just drag and the size as you need. Um, so there's that question. It's highlighted, and uh, it's, you see it's a hyperlink A, etc., etc. Uh, I can uh, double click here on the text and change it. So I can say, This is my question. And you see quickly it changes it on the actual page so you can see you can make changes to the html and see them right then and there quickly uh, obviously this is only happening on my browser it's not sending stuff to the server but uh, this is a great way to try things out see how they look and once you get things to look exactly how you need them uh, then you can uh, make move those changes to the to your server. Uh, this is one of the big reasons people use developer tools. Um, so that's the HTML. You can also add elements and modify elements by, you know, you can right click on them. You can add attributes or just, you know, edit it as raw HTML uh, and, uh, you know, set the various uh, special hover focus and stuff for hyperlinks on an element. Uh, so that's the HTML part. There's also uh, this button over here when we're looking at the view. So when you click this button, then uh, that's the mobile view. You're going to have to reload the page after that every time. Uh, so now we're looking at the same page, the same HTML, but this is the way it would look. It looks on an Apple, Apple iPhone 4 in this case. And you can select, they have a bunch of different devices so I can go for a Nexus I can have to reload and uh, it shows it to me I can select portrait on landscape portrait with a navigation bar so it shows the navigation bar there um, and then I can also do stuff with the network which is useful uh, later on when you're doing more uh, if you want to test how it looks uh, with a very slow you know a 3g 2g a very slow line or on Wi-Fi, you can do that um, with that. Uh, I have to make this go away. I'm going to press the escape key. Uh, so escape will make the little console uh, or those little things, uh, windows go away. So this is also useful. I mean, it just, again, it just shows it how it looks. You have little rulers and you can play around with that. And I'm going to get out of there, go to normal, and then I have to reload again. So now we're back to regular desk view so getting back to here this is the HTML and uh, I'm gonna select one of these questions uh, right. so once I have selected a question uh, this is this pane over here I'm gonna make this bigger this pane over here is the CSS that is associated with the selected div in this case so the selected element uh, this is the CSS that is being applied to that element so for this question uh, I'm applying all this CSS rules and styles. You notice that it's in order. So from mo it's in order from most 
specific to more general. So we start with element style. There isn't any, but then we have the, the class. So this div has a class of question summary. So this is the uh, CSS rules or styles that are applied for that class. And here, so they come from, I guess, two different files or parts. Uh, and then, you know, more general, this is from, for all the, uh, all these tags have these stylings, etc. Uh, you'll notice that some of these are have the strike through so that means that these are not being applied because they are being overridden by a more specific rule in this case this padding here is being overridden by this padding here so whenever you see a strike through that means that if you go up you will find another one of those that is the same and that's why this one is not applied this is a common thing that uh, you, you run into when you're trying to debug your css to find out why is it not applied so this makes it easy to find why your CSS rule is not being applied uh, as you see I've been checking if I check on these I turn them off so checking on it I mean unchecking uh, will turn it off and on so you can see how things look with that rule or without it I got rid of all the padding there uh, this is my border it's been applied here uh, if I check that out then it uses this border here. Uh, I can now also change this. So I have a border of one pixel. I'm gonna make it 10 pixels. This has got bigger, 100 pixels, very big border. Um, so you can do that. Uh, colors, whenever you have a color like here, you, you can click on it and edit the, uh, edit the actual hex values, or you can click on the little square. It's kind of hard. And then just pick a color with this nice color chooser. Um, so you see, I can just choose any color, it changes right away there. Mm. So as you see, it's changing for all of them because, uh, you know, even though I have selected this div, I'm actually changing the question summary class. So it's, it is actually changing the, uh, the border bottom color for all question summary classes in CSS. So that's why all of them change. Um, so once you get to the right color that you need, you can go back to your CSS file and then change it there. So those, that's this tag here. Uh, then uh, some of these, you know, you can break it down like margin, you know, have top, right, bottom. So if you click here, you can see the four of them, same for borders. Uh, border has a lot more as you might know, border, color, style, etc. Uh, you can change those. So, um, then uh, computed, if you click on the computed tab up here, you see for the selected element, and at one time, these are all the actual, it just lists all of them, uh, all the styles that are being currently applied. So it doesn't show, this one shows hierarchically and you know, who overrides what, this one sort of, you know, compresses all the ones that are not overwritten and puts gives them to you in a list and it's alphabetically so that's also useful sometimes when you just want to quickly find what's the margin for this element or whatever um, this one here th this is also very nice this is it's just telling you the margin border and padding for the element uh, in this case again this div here so and you can click on these little bars here and change them uh, so again if I add a mar top margin of 100 uh, I do that and it puts it up right there you can see here it, it will actually put it in line in the element so it actually this is how it works it puts a style attribute and then puts this here when you do that when you change an element um, so 44 I will add it right there in the element but again, it's useful for, this is very useful for debugging your layout. And uh, if you're doing JavaScript, you click on the event listeners, and then you can see here the various events that are associated with the element uh, that you are clicking on. Uh, and uh, this is more JavaScript things you probably won't be using as much. At least at the beginning. Uh, so, 
those three. Uh, that's, this is all just the elements tab we've been talking about. There's the console tab, uh, which is here. You can also, if you're in elements, you can press escape and it'll open a little console down here. This is a JavaScript console, so you can type JavaScript and it will uh, run it right there. Oops, alert. So it will actually run the JavaScript. But the important thing is that this JavaScript is actually running within the page, right? So uh, you have access to whatever functions and JavaScript functions that this page uh, uses. You can access them. You can call JavaScript on the page, run it, and test things out, look at global variables, etc. So it's incredibly useful when you are doing your JavaScript. 